In this gripping interview, an ex-Green Beret turned journalist reveals a shocking truth, the months-long invasion of the United States homeland by Chinese agents and operatives. He raises urgent questions about national security. So let's okay. let's continue with the guy you met, the, the 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 Chinese guy you met at the border. You said his accent was good, his body language was good. So what else? How did it go? He in the end he admitted being a spy. He did, and I think he blurted that out uh, in in, a, in 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 just a frenetic moment of emotion uh, because he was tired and he was. Where are you from? China. What 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 happened? What happened? Hey but, brother, can you, we say something here? What? You just popped out of the jungle and crossed into the country illegally, yes. and then you're wondering why we're filming you. Yes. So that's a little bit weird, isn't yeah, it? Yes, you know, I I'll tell you about it something. Yes. You said you've been to America stop. before? Yeah, yes, stop, yes. stop scratching me, it's yeah, gonna who, make it worse, yeah, I'm who, telling you. Who, who are you? You're just yeah. a bunch of journeys, right? Yeah. But I don't, I don't... <laughs> See you in? No? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Dude, who are you? You just popped into the jungle and crossed in here illegally. Yeah, I've never been to the States, but I was the party one. Where, where, where are you from in China? What part? Around Beijing. Why are you trying to leave China? I've been mentally American since I was like a kid. That's why I can't speak like American. No, why, good, man. why did you decide to leave China? I'm mentally American. Me since, I was, yeah, yeah. since I was a kid. So you can't, so you it's can't a long be on story. video it's because a, it's of the long, surgery. It's a long story. Dude, I'm pretty sure you're a spy. You, you're coming across as a spy yes, to me, man. I am a spy. Yeah, I'm a spy. <laughs> Hungry and he was itching and he was irritated, right? <laughs> and it, he just uh, said it, you know. And actually, uh, a person I was met with actually accused him of being a spy. He said, you're a spy. And uh, and uh, and he and he just I, I think he actually just made an, an error in saying that, but we have checked him out. For instance, he the the uh, the Chinese man who came through with the incredible accent and the body language and knowing just when to say man and all you know just knowing you know really he he could have come off the boat to Florida, and and you would think he's been there for twenty years, right? Okay. And even though he's never been to the United States, according to him, right? And so. Um, and so he he uh, he was had, he he told this story, and some of it we were able to check out. And he, for instance, he said he he started in Bahamas, and he bought a boat from a Scotsman for five thousand dollars, right? And he actually said Scotsman. And so then he was going to Florida in the boat with his father. He said that was his father who I met. I don't think it was his father. The people that I was with didn't think so either, but who knows? Well, anyway, so. Uh, then he said he ran out of fuel and he was adrift, right? And uh, the U.S. Coast Guard picked him up. And so uh, it, it, I think he said it was at nighttime and I have to review the audio. But uh, but then he said the U.S. Coast Guard returned him to the Bahamas. Now, this checked out. He was definitely picked up by the U.S. Coast Guard on March 8th of this year, right? So that checked out. He said that the Bahamas then were going to deport him back to China. And... Um, and so his flight connected in uh, in in Cuba, and then from Cuba he changed his flight to Quito, Ecuador. Now, Quito is where the Chinese tend to come in. Actually, uh, they'll go to except for the ones who fly to Cancun or Mexico City first and that sort of thing. But the ones who are going to go through Darien Gap, they will go through Quito. So they so the Quito, Ecuador will allow them to come in without you know you can get visa on to, on on arrival right. And then from there, they take a two-day bus trip. It takes about 50 hours. And they go from Quito to a place called Nicocli in Colombia. Now, I've been to Nicocli. From Nicocli, they get on a boat to go to a place called Capargana, Colombia. I've done this boat ride. And then from there, they enter into the jungle, into the Darien Gap, which I've done. I did not walk through the Darien Gap, but I've been in that entry port part there. And then uh, the Chinese that don't have a lot of money, they have to walk through the jungle there. The ones who have more money, like he had, clearly had, he they'll take a boat around and they'll skip a lot of the most dangerous part of the jungle. And then their trip to the jungle is about two days, right? And 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 it's much safer because they're paying in advance. Not like the women, the Chinese women who take that safer route, they don't get raped. 
uh, the men don't get robbed and murdered because they're paying in advance. So it's like a safe route. You're getting the e-ticket, so to speak. And so um, he he did the e-ticket. He came through. He was still tired, though, because it's still, it's still a long march. You know, it's two days. And then what he and others do is they didn't they did then do this other very long walk out to try to save time, which is I think crazy, but they do it. And so that's when I met him. He was he was very tired, very hungry, itching, and he was telling a story. And so uh and and much of it did check out. Like for instance, much of the route that he's describing, I've either been on it or know it very well. Like like out in the villages that he described. I know those villages. I've been to them. I'm <clears throat> sorry, that he said he went to keto I mean, that's what they do. Chinese go to keto. That he said he got picked up by Coast Guard. We checked it out. He did get picked up by Coast Guard on March 8th. There is something else. When I was watching, when I was listening to that interview, he he was very confident, angry, and kind of dismissive. Like he treated her like below his level. That was shocking. He was actually, you know, an immigrant. He should be actually more dismissive, uh, submissive. But he was actually, he felt, that was my impression. He felt very, very confident, almost like angry, like looking uh, down at you. Did you have the uh, same impression? Yeah. A lot of the Chinese are like that. Yeah. Many of the Chinese yes. are definitely looking down at you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they are just like him. They're just dismissive. Yes. They're like, yeah, yeah. That, that, you know what I mean? Uh, and so, um, yeah. And, and some of them are of the, I would say, farmer class. And we know that some of those are going to work on the marijuana farms and places like Okay, but Oklahoma, let's, let's stay with those young, you know, draft age men. Like, how many of them are there? How do you pick them up? How do you, how does the government treat them? Like, you, you, you on your Twitter timeline, you often say there is a cooperation going on. It's all set up. The government is on it. So how does it look like? Why are you so confident that the government, like, they, they must know it and still they, they, there is nothing they do against it? I am beyond confident. This is a fact. You'll rarely hear me say something is 100% unless I'm physically present, completely authenticated beyond any doubt. This is 100% fact. The United States government is absolutely pumping people into the United States. That is a done deal. I can demonstrate it in a hundred different ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> those sleepers are also on it. Like, they're going through the same trail. They're getting over the same border, right in front of my cameras. I'm making photos and videos yeah, I, with I the same your, phone I'm talking with you, you on. Yeah. I'm watching the Chinese go right through. And when, you know, I've got video from the other night, maybe, I don't know, five or six days ago, seven days ago. On the, and in this Arizona. wasn't like that, let's say, a few weeks ago. This started recently that those, you know, young, young kind of strong men that they come in, it wasn't like that before. It started recently, yes? So that's No, it event. was like that before. It's been going on for a while. I say recently, at least the last year. At least the last oh, year. Oh, okay, okay. So not not like... Now, the other huge numbers have been... Uh, they've been going on for a while, uh, years. Uh, but now the the, the military-age Chinese males, uh, the increase of that is definitely, say, the last roughly year. Okay, so do you know what happens to them? Like they disappear? What, do they have a plan? Like what do they do on, once they are in the U.S.? We know that one that passed through the Darien Gap about three weeks ago, he immediately got a driver's license in Brooklyn. Like he just got that driver's license last week. You know? Okay. He, so so it would be about maybe four weeks ago he passed through the Darien and he immediately got his driver's license within a few days of getting in Brooklyn. It was just like instant. Went through the Gap. Made it to Brooklyn, got a driver's license. Okay, have you met you know, the intelligence guys? people that are watching this? Of which there will definitely be quite a few. You can easily check out, right? Chinese who went through Darien and got his driver's license. You know, shouldn't he be arrested? I mean, you can easily find out exactly who I'm talking about. I know who he is, so you should know who he is. I know his name. I know a lot about him, and so you should. I know intelligence people are watching this in your headquarters right now. See. I'm telling you, I'll give you the information. <laughs> they're, they're, this is so obvious. Some of these people are obviously spies. Okay, so what do you think? What's what? What would they do in the in the coming months or years? I mean, we can imagine what, but do you know anything particular? Did they tell you something else? Maybe other guys? Mm, nothing like you know, I'm coming to hit a power plant. Nothing like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, and and keep in mind, often. Um, when when paramilitaries do this sort of thing, your first mission is just to get into the country, right? 
your first mission is to get into the country, make your way to probably some contact, uh, and and then from there await instructions. Right? You're not coming. In, you're often you're not going to come in with some giant plan. Right? It'll, you'll you'll be issued that plan after you safely get in. They wouldn't want you to know the plan before you get in. Right? Because if you get captured and you squeak, you know. You're going to want, you're going to, now keep in mind, there's different people doing different things. Some people are just information operations with nothing kinetic, right? And some people are probably coming in to do just kinetics without any information operations, right? I mean, you see a lot of people that are, you know, uh, Chinese that are working for our universities and whatnot. They might have, there's a lot with top secret clearances or high, even higher than that security clearances that can barely speak passable English. You know what I mean? Our government is so stupid and weak that there's probably, there's probably, when you run this, there'll be people looking at this inside of our intelligence community, watching this around the table, and there'll be Chinese sitting there, you know, watching this right now, <laughs> literally watching our conversation. They could be watching it live right now, NSA, as an example. I, in fact, I would not doubt that they would. When I've been in the wars, I've seen real-time intelligence from phone calls like this or text or whatever. We're literally on a mission, say, in Mosul or in Afghanistan, like that's Iraq or, or in Afghanistan. And we literally, while they're talking on the phone, it's being intercepted. It's being translated that back in the United States and sent right back to us in seconds. Like you're, They're okay, literally well on the phone saying, they just took a right. It goes up, intercepted, goes to the United States, translated, is back to us in 30 seconds. He said, you just took a right. Look back, there he is, the guy on the phone. Bang, got him. You know, that Look, happens we'll, all the time. The uh, what I'm saying is this is yes. really, our government knows exactly who's coming through, and they're letting it happen. Any idea why? Like, did you talk to the border guards? Do you know anything from them? Maybe the border privately? patrol, the border patrol, let me tell you what the Border Patrol know. There's a few, like in every organization, that really are paying attention to the global situation. The, but the Border Patrol, for the most part, nine, at least nine out of ten that I ask, and I ask them, I'll be asking some tonight, have you ever, ever heard of Darien Gap? <clears throat> at least nine out of ten have never even vaguely heard of it, right? Uh, they've never even remotely heard of it. <laughs> like they, They're like, Darien Gap, what's that? You know? And, and uh, it's an you know it's a it's a plug between Panama and Colombia, right? Actually, the, in in Colombia and Panama, they call it the Darien plug. Uh, but uh, it, anyway, but the bottom line is is um they don't know anything about it. Most of their knowledge, again, there are some border patrols who are really tracking on the global thing, but there's others like at Yuma, there's where the fence ends in this one area. There's people from 140 to 160 countries, depending on who you might believe. There's about 140 countries coming through Darien. I know that much, right? That's confirmed because I see the, I've been able to see the records from the Panama government. They let me see them. And so, and I see them myself coming through. I've spent months down there. So, uh, so, but the people coming across, they, they walk around this corner in Yuma. I just spent three nights there until sunrise, sunset to sunrise, three nights, right? So, <clears throat> Long days and nights. That's why I'm coughing all this dust. I'm sorry. And um, and um, so when you talk with Border Patrol, have you heard of Darien Gap? The answer is no, right? And when you ask, where do you think all these people are coming from? They're like, you know, they're migrating. I'm like, okay, but how did people from, uh, say, 140 countries magically appear at this little spot where they come around the border wall and you line them up against the wall you ask them where they're from, and the Chinese never have ID, and the Chinese just give you some name and a birthday that you can't verify. You know what I mean? And uh, and you and you just they just magically appear from Venezuela and Colombia and China and Yemen and Egypt. A bunch of Egypts came in recently. I mean, they come in all the time. Where did they just magically? How did they just magically appear on the other side of the fence? Most of the border patrol, their knowledge of what's going on is as thin as an eggshell. They don't know anything outside of the egg and they don't know what's happening inside the egg other than they help them go to the bus and they go to a facility and I've done my job. You know what I mean? You, it's like, I'm just doing met, my job. Have you met other guys like that one Chinese? Did you have other such encounters? Yes, yes. Okay, could you talk about that? Like you've met other guys, were they as good as him, English as good, body language as confident? How did they behave? Not as good as him on the English and body language and whatnot. Or uh, they're not admitting they speak English, right? 
I mean, a better spy never would have spoken English to us. He would have just been like, you know, blah, 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 you know, or not said anything and kept walking. But he was emotional. He was, I think we just found, you know, if you fish through the bucket enough, you'll find one crab that'll talk, right? And uh, and I think he just happened to be in an emotional state and he talked, right? Uh, now he knows um, that we're on to him because he sends me uh, WhatsApps. In fact, I should I can't check him now. I could, or I can check. Let's see if he sent me anything today. He 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 made it to Mexico. I know that much. And uh, as of a couple of weeks ago, he had not come into the United States yet. Uh, let's see. Let's see if he sent a message today. And so uh, he hasn't he hasn't sent me a message in a while. Let's see. He said something about um, well, he knows. And he's he's actually said that he's seen that um, that he's being doxxed by Chinese by other Chinese now because he's been in the news and they recognize some things about him and and so other Chinese are actually calling him out. It's quite interesting. And I think uh, based on some information that I have, um, it's solid, but it's not hundred percent. It's let's say ninety percent. He's probably a lieutenant colonel in the PLA. Uh, but I don't know that for sure. But it came from an incredibly good source. Okay, but you you work with <laughs> other people. There is a network. You call them your team. So what do they say? How is their experience? Because there is definitely more to it than than just one person. Oh yeah, they're meeting Chinese every day, and a lot of them are very uh, suspect, to put it mildly. Um, uh, I haven't seen any messages from them today. Uh, I mean, you know, these fit got these fit guys that are get getting through the jungle with not any serious problems. Uh, they're very alert. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm at Fort Bragg sometimes when I'm talking with these guys. You know what I mean? They got to keep in mind, I, you know, with my background and the sort of friends that I have, I'm kind of in this world for my whole life. You know what I mean? For my all of my adult yeah. life. Right. I've been around these sorts of people. So even though. A lot of this, the opposition can be well trained. I mean, a real, a really good uh, act, uh, actor. You're, you're probably not. You might not pick him out, but it's going to be hard to hide that you're very fit and you're mm -hmm. very alert. Yeah. And you yeah. know, it, 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 it and uh, and they're just, they're just not like the other. They're just not like the other fish. You know what I mean? The other fish are like, I need some food. You know, these guys are more like, you know, who, who, who's they're checking out who's around them. They'll have better shoes. Uh, they'll have. A better gear that they don't have cuts all over their hands from the jungle you know what i mean they, they they've been trained they're they're not they're not just uh average guys now a lot of the chinese coming in though they do look like farm hands not a lot let's say five or ten percent look like farm hands and that sort of thing and my guess is that some of those are going to work in the we know that there have been illegal Chinese caught on the illegal marijuana grows. Future. In, like, how do you see this developing? Well, you know, war is my business and I've been in a lot of wars and conflicts. It's very clear that this is not just an economic migration. There will be those in, in there that are economically migrating, right? For whatever reasons. And then there's criminals who got released from the prisons in Venezuela and that sort of thing. So there are many different reasons why people are coming. And but why is it happening on a massive scale? Most Americans don't even realize that millions per year are coming in. A low estimate at this point would be 3 million this year. That's a low estimate, right? And so why are they coming in? We don't really have a border anymore. Now you'll see them doing these, you know, the, 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 the statistics are down on the, in the interactions on the border is bullshit. I'm on the border every night. The border is wide open. They're coming in. Most of the people who come across are not even encountered. They're mostly what's called gotaways. Others are being flown in from places like Guatemala and Colombia, right? <clears throat> They're openly doing this. Presidents uh, Obama and, you know, uh, President and Bush and, uh, and um, Clinton did an announcement maybe, when was it, five or six weeks ago, that they're going to start uh, making it easier for people to find their way to the United States by uh, flying in through Colombia and Guatemala. You know, you can't make up this stuff. So, I mean, those are not going to be reflected in the numbers. And again, I see it with my own eyes. Every night, most of the people that are coming through never encounter the Border Patrol. And the, only, and, and the people who encounter them willingly uh, are the people that almost certainly know they're going to get in, right? Or they don't want to be 
they don't mind being in the database. Like for instance, we call him China Ninja, the one that you know that we found coming out of the jungle and that you know had the boat in uh and uh bought the boat in uh in in um in over in Bahamas and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, he he clearly was not your average fish. And uh he looks to be actually a lieutenant colonel in the PLA, right? Uh so let's see. What what would he be you you saw the video, you saw how aggressive yes, he was. Yes, you saw how how he looked down on us, right? Yes. Uh and, and how he talked down to us and how he threatened Masako Ganaha with physical violence, right? He physically he he threatened her multiple times on video and audio, right? Yeah. So I mean this is the, she's a Japanese journalist who was with us, right? I mean, uh, this is the sort of thing that we see on a regular basis, especially among Chinese. The Chinese can be very aggressive, very dismissive, extremely arrogant, like straight up arrogant. Like, this is my place. I don't have to talk with you. You know what I mean? Just leave me alone. Right. <clears throat> yeah. That's what we're, we're going into war. Bottom line. We're going to go into a kinetic war. Millions of people clearly are going to die. <clears throat> this is very serious. This is a weaponized migration. These people that are coming in don't have weapons. They'll get them later. Part of their weapon is just being here or getting into the right position to provide intelligence to 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 uh, you know to, to 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 buy a house across the street from the power plant or the target. Right. Part of their part of their jobs will be support. Part of their jobs will be nothing but to buy a house, watch the power plant every day and night, and then when it time comes time. You know, our team will come and get in the house and do their thing, right? I mean, this is the way special operations often work, right? Paramilitary operations aren't just everybody loads up in a van and does it. They move into the neighborhood. They might be there for quite a while, right? Uh, and Al-Qaeda is good at doing things like this, by the way. They're very good at doing multi-year operations that include going into a new community, finding a wife, marrying her, opening a business, buying a home, literally raising children you know what i mean they this is deep cover you know where people would be like well they would never do it they've got children oh yes they would this is common right there you just don't live in the same world that i live in they will do this they are doing it they're moving into the united states they're buying key property next to our military bases next to the texas border new mexico they're buying property all over the place in key locations ports this sort of thing who who owns Los Angeles Port Harbor? You know, who owns, who owns all these places, right? The, we see China, uh, I see them doing the same thing in Cambodia, Laos, buying up property in a place in Thailand called Kra Isthmus. I have an office in Thailand where they're, where they're, there's a, there, there's a potential for building sort of a Panama Canal in this place in Thailand called the Kra Isthmus. It will be very important. Yes. Chinese have been busy buying up that land for years. They play long games, right? They can literally come in, you know, where the children, like there's a Confucius Institute down in Panama City. We were just down there. These young uh, Chinese girls, very pretty in their 20s, teaching Mandarin. You know how the Confucius Institutes work? They get the yeah. children of the elite there. Yes. They get the children of the elite in those schools. They give them scholarships over to China. You know, these pretty uh, Chinese girls or boys, depending on you know, the taste of the girl, the students. And, and, and then they'll do the mice game. Mice is a counterintelligence acronym for, um, for how to recruit people, right? Money, ideology, coercion, and ego, right? Mice, mousetrap. The cheese is money, ideology, coercion, or ego, typically, right? And sex is obviously part of that on the coercion and ego, right? So, I mean, these sorts of things are normal. They happen on a daily basis. They are not hit and miss they are industrialized it's like it's not like hey here's a target we got to go recruit some prostitute or something no there's schools for this stuff you know what i mean this is like yes. they'll, they'll 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 magically appear in places at your gym or at your at, at the coffee shop or wherever you know what i'm saying this is industrialized espionage and paramilitary operations it's no joke like you know when i was in tibet they did you know, of course, in Tibet, you know, you see people flying the Tibetan prayer flags, free Tibet. Well, I got news for you. The only way you're going to see Tibet free is if the Chinese Communist Party collapses. I've been up, been all over the place in Tibet. It's not going to be free, right? They did it. They took it. They're doing the same thing to Xinjiang with the Uyghurs. They've done the same with Hong Kong. They're working on, obviously, Taiwan. And I'm telling you with full seriousness, 
they're planning to do the same thing with Japan. Some Japanese yeah, see I know. it, but that's it's like two percent see it. Yeah, in in Okinawa, yeah, they they are supporting the independence movement. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's ongoing. Hawaii too, the Hawaiian independence movement. I mean, same thing. And you're Everywhere. saying Thailand, Thailand, the same thing. They're buying property in the right places. Yep, yep, and they're buying. You know, you see Chinese moving in all over the place. And uh, and and taking key positions and this sorts of things. They got there's a Confucius Institute at the University of Panama. Go in there and check it out. Check out the, who the students are that are in those classes. Right, those are the students of the elite. Right, those are the children of the elite. They're going to be getting scholarships to go to China to learn their history. The mice are going to be unleashed on them. They're going to have all kinds of girlfriends and boyfriends and videotapes of them doing all kinds of stuff, acting drunk and crazy and dancing on the table with, you know, prostitutes or something. It'll all be on video, right? And they will be in the mousetrap, taking money and everything else. They'll be in the Chinese hands, you know, in, in, in every different direction. The mousetrap is always being set and re-cheesed, right? And so the bottom line is, and I told mem uh, serious members of the Panamanian government, uh, they'll kill all of you. <laughs> I've been to Tibet, right? You have no idea what's coming if you how don't you pay any attention. Those people from the government, how how did you set this up? Uh, I mean, I'm kind of well known down there, so it wasn't oh, hard okay. to get in, right? And so, uh, so I, you know, I've told people in other countries this too, like you, you, you especially Panama. You got to keep in mind, six percent of world trade goes through that canal, right? Yes. I mean, that's massive. That is absolutely massive. And Panama, if you own Panama, and China's making a strong go at it, right, with their information campaigns. If you own Can Panama, then you hugely influence South America, Central America, Mexico, and the United States. They are work they want to build a road through the Darien Gap and a train, right? Think about that. That means take over the United States, Mexico, Michael. Central America. I would really like to thank you for your time. It was really very informative, very interesting. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Yeah. I really appreciate your inviting me on. Now I'm going to get back Thank to the Thank you so much.